Happy Christmas everyone, how is everyone doing for today and welcome back to another movie review video for today and for today's review this is going to be my review on a film that came out back in 1990 which this is a Christmas family comedy film and this is the very first time on my channel I've ever reviewed an old Christmas movie which I've never had the chance to do that before but this year I feel like I should review one of my all time favorite Christmas movies and when it, may, when it comes to me reviewing Christmas movies I mostly review the most recent ones but, the, like, but like I said this is the very first time I've ever reviewed an old Christmas movie before on my channel and as you guys can tell from the title of this video and from the jumper that I'm wearing, if you want to see the whole whole thing on my jumper, here it is. Of course, I'm here to review Home Alone. Now, Home Alone was directed by Chris Columbus and this was written and produced by the late great John Hughes, rest in peace, and stars young Macaulay Culkin who plays Kevin McAllister who has a huge family like he has two loving parents who are played by Catherine O'Hara and the late great John Hurt, also rest in peace. And he has a whole load of, and he has loads of siblings like brothers and sisters, including his big brother Buzz, who often bullies him by saying this famous line in the movie. I wouldn't let you sleep in my room if you were growing on my ass. And he also has his aunt and uncle, Uncle Frank, who Uncle Frank doesn't really like Kevin a lot in the movie. Also by saying this other iconic line from the movie, Look what you did, you little jerk. <laughs> and at the moment, Kevin feels like everyone, everyone in this family is kind of against him, like his family are not getting along with him and all of that. Because the reason why is that the whole family is very busy at this moment in, at Christmas time because they're about to have this Christmas vacation in Paris, France. And uh, But what ends up happening is that the family are running late for the airport to basically catch their flight to Paris. And once they do make it, they are they accident of course they accidentally leave Kevin Kevin McAllister home alone and once Kevin finds out he's home alone he starts to have fun on his own doing whatever he wants until he finds out that he has to fend himself when these two burglars named Harry and Marv who are played by Joe Pesci and Daniel Stern target his house and basically they want to rob his house for Christmas so Kevin must figure out a way to basically how to fend himself and his home before his parents get back home while these while these two burglars are trying to break in his home for Christmas so that's pretty much the story of Home Alone. Now before I get into what I think of this movie let's talk about my backstory surrounding Home Alone. When I was growing up as a kid I used to watch this film quite a bit when I was growing up as a young kid but when I got once I got a little bit more older I used to get traumatized by this movie like there was some parts that, kind of, that did kind of make me a bit scared and a bit frightened and all that and every holiday season my family always watched this film except me and they always try to make me watch this film but I'm like nope 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 turn this off turn this off and I often just run out the living room and I just run up to my bedroom <laughs> but when over the years flew by my fear I started to basically confirm my fears surrounding this movie and I managed to pull that and I managed to do that like my fears completely vanished from my system and I was not afraid of this movie anymore and I have watched this film ever since I've always re I've always rewatched this film every single Christmas season I often watch it with my family all the time as well like with my, my parents my brothers my grandparents my cousins and my auntie and uncles and I even watch it with my, with my friends and all that and I even went to see this movie when it was released in 2019 for, for for the Christmas season and all that. And it was a really fun experience to see an old classic, an old holiday favorite on the big screen. And uh, from what I remember, my my uh, screening for this movie was completely full house. There was a lot of adults and children in my screening. And does my opinion for this movie still hold up this day? You betcha. This is an absolute classic and I can definitely say this is definitely one of my favorite wintry Christmas films of all time. Like for in terms of family Christmas films. This is indeed my favorite family Christmas movie of all time. Ever since I rewatched this film over the holidays, I started to appreciate this movie a lot more than ever because of how special this film is this movie is especially well made. Like I said, this film was directed by Chris Columbus, who would later on went, went on to direct the first two Harry Potter films. He has a great sense of this film very visually of setting up jokes because the humor in this film is just top notch like it's just off the charts not just because the slapstick not just because of its slapstick of the the booby traps no it's just the timing of the film because this film is really well edited it's a very well it's a perfectly well edited film because it, it managed to have some pause no pauses and speeding up the jokes which for for what this film did here for what this film did for having all that here was just perfect and like I said Chris Columbus's direction for this film was just beyond great and the performances in the film Macaulay Culkin as Kevin McAllister of course he's wonderful in the film he's so likable and he's just all in all 
very, very funny in the film. And ever since like, I rewatched this film, I started hearing back then when it was first released, there was a lot of kids who wanted it to be just like him, you know, like, yes, I want to be like him. I want to be left home alone. I want to set up booby traps with micro machines and paint cans. I want to have fun. I want to steal my brother's BB gun. <laughs> That's what every kid was like when ever since they first saw this movie. And of course, when it comes to the two wet bandits themselves, you know, Harry and Marv, who are played by Joe Pesci and Daniel Stern. Joe Pesci in the film, he's fantastic in the film, and he was just so great and really funny here. And when I started seeing him in more movies, I always kept thinking, I always kept seeing him as Harry, not just some, not just the, another character he's playing. Because when I was growing up, obviously I never saw any of his other films. Like I never saw Goodfellas because I was too young to watch. But once I got a bit more older, and I did see his other well-known films like Goodfellas and Raging Ball and Casino, and then I rewatched this film. I was like, what a bit of a departure he had here because, you know, he was he's really good at playing the same old character that we've seen before in Scorsese films. But for this movie, he's just someone different here. And for what Joe Pesci did for this film, he really, he was, like I said, he was just terrific. He was just brilliant in the movie. And he's, like I said, he's just really funny for what he does with Marv in the film. Like, shut up, Marv! <laughs> That's just funny. And Daniel Stern as Marv, perfect casting for playing this you know this bumbling burglar he's just really really funny and the chemistry between these two are just off the charts like we'll come back here nine o'clock that way it gets darker yeah kids are afraid of the dark you're afraid of the dark too mom you know that no i'm not <laughs> yeah like i said the chemistry in this film is just so so funny and just like I said, it's completely off the charts. And everyone else in the film, you know, Catherine O'Hara and John Hurt as the parents are both great in the film. And I also like how this movie gives a, gives a bit of a backstory to this old character, this other character, which is Old Man Marley, who's played by the late Robert Blossom, rest in peace, which he was really good in the movie. But like I said, I liked how he was given a backstory where he's basically an old man who walks up and down in the, down in the streets every night, salting the sidewalks. You see that garbage can full of salt? That's where he keeps his victims. The salt turns the bodies into mummies. Mummies. And I liked how we get to see him pop up once in a while in this movie where you think he's just some scary man. It's mostly due to the, um, the music score by John Williams because the music score for this film is just fantastic. It's one of my favorite music scores ever from this legendary composer for having music moments where it tends to build tense moments and some heartfelt moments when it gets to its ten mo tense moments it's just perfect for what it's just it fits perfectly well for a movie like this and for when it gets to its heartfelt moments which we there's a heartfelt moment in the film when we see old man Marley in the church and Kevin actually bumps into him and Kevin's like scared and then old, ma old man Marley's like you know what kid we need to talk we just need to set things set this set things straight and then we see them start to interact with each other and we and we do learn about more of his backstory that um old man Molly is not allowed is not allowed to have much time with his granddaughter because he never spends more time with his son because they both have an argument and they never talked to each other ever since which for hearing about when we do learn about, more about that it is generally heartbreaking and every time i rewatch this film it does bring a little bit of tears to my eyes even before the film draws to a close and it's mostly due to John Williams' score because the score for this film, like I said, is just fantastic. When it has some moments where it does have tense moments and heartfelt moments. And this film has a, you know, a very, a very a vulnerable message in the film that, I, that, that kids will definitely take away once they do watch this film. Of like how you feel and all that, like once you're alone and all that. Because once we get to see how Kevin starts to feel when he's all alone, he feels like he just wants his family back because he knows how much he loves his family. And like I said, the message of the film, it's one you can just rely on. You can just, you can just, just take home and just absolutely just feel it in your, in yourself. Like how you feel and all that. Of like how you feel with your family and all that. It's just, I just love the message in the film. And also, like I said, when it, and like I said, when it gets to its humorous moments, which like I said, it's just beyond off the charts. There's more humorous moments, not like outside of its slapstick and all that. Like this one where um, Kevin uses the best fake video ever to be made in a real life movie which is called angels with filthy souls which we see kevin uses that and he which we see kevin using that in the film once in a while and it's just really funny like he wants to use it to scare off the pizza delivery guy that seems really funny and the second time where he uses the scare away mauve and yeah, it's just really funny and for once he does that he, you can just definitely see how smart this kid is of like what he's doing and all to basically defend himself and his home 
and that's what makes and that and I can never see why adult and I can never see the adults really digging all that because of how smart this kid is. He can even outsmart adults as well, which is really funny. Like there's one scene where he goes to the supermarket where he's shopping, and the woman's like, "Where's your mom? My mom's in the car. Where's your father? He's at work. What about your brothers and sisters? I'm an only child. Where do you live? Oh, I can tell you that. Why not? Because you're a stranger. <laughs> I just love how." Kevin does that and that's and every time I watch that scene I'm just like that's the best comeback he's ever done here and of course when it comes to its booby traps it's easily the best part of the film they're just so funny and I always can't stop laughing my ass off every time I see those moments and like I said it's directed very well done by Chris Columbus because like I said it's mostly due to the editing because the editing is just beyond beyond perfect for its timing and all that for slow for having just just speeding up the humor and all that and having pause and non-pauses and all of that and just overall, in the end, guys, Home Alone. This is indeed a, 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 a this is indeed an, a, an iconic holiday classic. It's definitely one you can watch. Every, you should watch every single year with your family and friends. And this, this is just, and this is just overall my favorite holiday film of all time. And I've got no nitpick to pick out with this movie other than this is indeed a holiday classic to basically watch every single Christmas season. So that's pretty much all I'd say about Home Alone. And I'm gonna give Home Alone five out of five. <laughs> Yet, like I said, I've just got no single nitpick to pick out this movie because, in, like, because, like I said, I indeed love this movie the bits, and like I said, this is my favorite holiday film of all time, and I'll never get tired of watching this every single season. Once I watch this film every single year with my friends and family. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching for my movie review on Home Alone, and let me know what you think of this film if you have seen this already, if you just recently seen this film for the very first time. Do you absolutely love this movie, or do you not really like this movie? As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and this has been Foggins Media Corner signing off.